Welcome to the Weekly Bioanalysis, a KCAS podcast. Hello and welcome to the 50th episode of the Weekly Bioanalysis, the official podcast of KCS Bioanalytical and Biomarker Services. KCS is a bioanalytical CRO serving the pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical industries for over 40 years. We've read that for 50 episodes. I don't think I want to do oh, that again. thank goodness we don't have to do that live. We're live. <laughs> so, yes, we're, we're on video, so we're doing something a little bit different. We're, we're dropping the introduction because we've done the same thing over and over and over again. And if you didn't know, we just hate doing the intro. It's the worst part of the show. <laughs> So we don't have to do it today because we're live yes, in person. And partly because we're not located in upstate New York, Kansas City, and our producers in Missouri. We're all here in one room. We're doing it on film for the first time. So if you're, you usually get the podcast as, a, as an audio episode, you can now actually access a video version of it if you care to explore further. Not sure I would, but if you want well, to, it's certainly there. It'll be very entertaining to watch us on video doing all this this week. Of course, it's our 50th podcast. What a monumental podcast for us. We are so happy that you're tuning in and listening and this time watching us for the first time. So we usually have the format where we do news, main topic, then just a ramble at the end and, and sign off. It's going, we've thrown that all out the window for this episode. We'll go back to that format next time. Yeah. But this is just a get to know, talk about things that are happening to up to KCS recently, um, where we seem to be going for the longer term. And it's just a, a nice yeah. way to commemorate what is a, is a significant milestone. Yeah, we wanted to mix it up a little bit for our 50th. We're not going to do our normal format, as John mentioned. We're going to you know, kind of touch on a few topics that we feel like are kind of relevant to the actual topic, which is we're here in person and the episode will be surrounding not just being here for our 50th, 50th podcast and recording it live. It's also around our recent trip to APS for, uh, which was lit in Philadelphia. Of course that was live. So it's some return to normalcy. We'll talk about that, but is life really normal just yet? See, I would never say normalcy. Yeah, it's there's nothing no, normal it's, about it's, us. No, it's normality in the UK. I, I, oh, I, I, that, I, I see, normality is a chemistry term. I, I, can't, I can't deal with normalcy. Every time someone says it, it's like, I get that. Ah. Yeah, it's, it's like unprecedented. Yes, I don't want to yes. hear that word either. But this is our 50th, and it's an unprecedented episode. So we, we mix it up a little bit for you. We're going to have some fun today. And with that, John, maybe we'll just jump just, right into it. We'll jump into the news that we don't really have. So. Yeah. If, if you didn't know, uh, when we actually do our podcast, and it's just the audio version of it, we actually uh, start with our news first and then go into the main topic and go over our, you know, of course, we love talking about our weekend and what we eat, but we record the intro for uh, last, if you didn't know that. And the reason we do that is it kind of calms us because if I didn't mention it, we don't like the intro. <laughs> yes, doing the intro sucks. <laughs> it does. Pure and simple. So we've, we've stuck with the same, same way of doing things. This is our intro being... Done at the end, but we'll jump into the news that we recorded earlier. And now the news. Yes. Or what's, what, right. what's left of it. <laughs> so let's move to the news. And in a different approach from what we normally do, we are going to have a very abbreviated news section. Usually we have a list of things we're going to go through. We have plenty to talk about on each. but And we have all those ready for next time. But some of the topics that we're likely to cover next time include the... Um, the, the, the authorization of, of Merck's anti-COVID antiviral. Um, so th that, that becomes an alternative approach to treatment um, on top of vaccines. So that's there, but we, we haven't done any background research on that. So let's, let's talk about it more in depth next time. And then we could talk about vaccination will be an, another good topic. And certainly it's an easy one that we can browse through on the laptops while we're talking just the relative vaccination rates. Um, but sort of relevant we'll, to our maybe, maybe we'll touch on that after we talk about the where we've been recently. So yeah. should we go to? No, I, I think uh, it's relevant to what, some of the topics. As John said, next week we're going to cover new therapeutics. Uh, of course, vaccine approval for, or at least conditional approval for pediatric. Uh, but I think for this week, where we're going to um, dive into just like global vaccine rates, U.S. vaccine rate, because it's germane to our visit to APS, which is the main topic for today. Sure. Um, well, 
part of the rambling main topic of It's going to be a lot of rambling today. <laughs> no, so, uh, John, you know, first kind of little tidbit is 58% of the U.S. is vaccinated, but um, before we drill deeper into that, why don't you tell us about some of the world rates because it's so actually, fascinating stuff. No, let's, let's, let's back off a bit. So, as we said at the beginning, this is the first time we've actually done this face-to-face. Um, we're actually now getting out in the world, and last week was a was a big adventure for us because we both went to the uh, APS Farmside three hundred and sixty meeting in Philadelphia. Um, for us as an industry, that's our our biggest meeting of the year. Um, but we knew going into it that attendances were were going to be down. It was a mix between the virtual and the um, physical presence of actually being there. And for us, it was important to to actually be there. Um, mm-hmm. A num- number of our customers and competitors we knew went virtual only. But for us, it, it's it's that big deal of actually getting out and talking to people. Um, like say it was in the. Uh, conference centre in Philadelphia, so a nice, a nice location, yeah. um, very convenient for Reading Terminal Market, so it wasn't just mm-hmm. the the excitement of being out and talking to peers, it was actually being on the doorstep of good food, and, and actually yeah. that, I honestly, I was there a little bit beyond the conference, and to have that ability to walk around mm-hmm. Reading Terminal Market and just sort of soak in the yeah. atmosphere, for me that was a big step forward in terms of I'm on my way to normality, so this was this yeah. was a good thing to be doing. Yeah, well, that, it, it, it did have some normality to it in terms of um, going to a conference, being live. Mm-hmm. Um, also, as you mentioned, it was great to be in a city. and the, um, Yeah, it was good to see the hustle and bustle of the city. It was good to um, go to the conference, although, you know, as, as we know, there were still some elements of it that didn't, uh, you know, feel like normalcy. But I think it was a step in the right direction, and... Um, Thankfully, everything everything turned out well. We're back, and here we are in person again. So, so in, in terms of the uh, actual physical be, being there physically at the conference, we had to prove we were vaccinated. So we the, they uh, sent us uh, an app to download the Clear app, which I think is fairly universally yep. used. Um, you had a number of you first of all had to scan your your vaccine card, various other things, and then we had to do a daily survey. Um, to say that we hadn't been in contact with other people diagnosed with COVID, we hadn't experienced any symptoms. And then when I actually got to the the hall, that was the the first strange thing was actually having to wear a mask at all times. Yeah. So you're tr- you're tr- trying to be sociable, but you can't gauge anyone's reactions because they've got a big... It's hard to notice people with that on too. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, you didn't necessarily recognise yeah. people because when you're used to seeing their full face versus the eyes, people skate past and you think, I think I know that person. Yeah. But Plus I we're half blind I mean, anyway. I think so. I know that half a person, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and I'll, I'll add on to, John mentioned the Clear app, which was a, a very, um, I thought it was slick, it worked well. And so you had to prepare yourself beforehand, you know, you had to like take a picture of your license, you had to take a picture of a vaccine card, it all got uploaded, so it made it pretty seamless when you got there. So all you had to do was like answer a couple questions on the app, and then a, they'd scan the app. So, yeah. yeah, so as John mentioned, the Clear app was really very slick. It worked quite nicely. You, ahead, of, ahead of the conference, you took a picture of your license. Um, you scanned in your vaccine card. And then every day when you got there, you just had to answer a couple questions. You know, you don't have a fever, nothing like that. And then an app would come up and they'd scan that. So it made it very, even though that was, I would call it an inconvenience, it made it easy to get in and out of the oh, conference. Sure. And then I got a funny sidebar because my camera is uh, my phone has been, uh, in, I swam with it a couple times, so the camera doesn't work right. And so in order to uh, have it work, I had to use my iPad to do this. So every day I had to pull my iPad out and use that instead of my <laughs> Just phone. Just glad it wasn't your laptop. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't want to like, cause if, if you didn't use it, it was a real, you had to go through a lot more rigors every day if you didn't use this sure. clear. So it was, uh, what I want to uh, end with on this is, despite some of that inconvenience, it was well worth Doing all that to be in present. I thought oh, it was absolutely! Great. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting. You know, you got the clear up as your techni- technological approach to saying that you're you're healthy and ready for the conference that day. But then it always comes back to the the sort of more mundane approach of how do you tag people to say they're they're clear for the day, and so it's yeah. a different coloured dot yeah. on your on your pass to say that yes, this day I've got a blue dot, and then the next day is an orange dot, um, just to sort of. So to, to then your, your security could, could continually check. So it's sort of nice, elegant, simple yeah. solution to track people through the conference. Yes, yeah, so you're, they, they made that, they, and they were very diligent about that. Mm-hmm. There was a whole host of people. It was a, a little, 
more seemed more than normal in terms of getting in and out of a conference. But again, it was all worth it just to be able to attend live. And as John said, it was pretty easy. It had a green dot, a blue dot, a red dot based off of sure. getting scanned. So that was great. So, so yeah. typical, typical attendances at this conference are usually in like the six to 10,000 range. Here we were, I think we were in... 2,000 uh, 2, uh, 2, total, now I think about 1,000 in person. Yeah. yeah. So, but it also meant that we could actually retain social distancing very easily because there were so few people there. But it was still, it was good meeting. It was, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. We, we both were in, on panels where um, we, it helped that we were there because we were asked to participate and, and discuss some of the issues that we face in, in bioanalysis. For me, it was um, talking through challenges that CROs face and deal with. For you, it was... Yeah, bioanalytical validation challenges. A lot of it was in the statistical space. But it was a, it, it was a, good, it was a good conference in general. It, good to nice, be on a panel, yeah. The, the nice thing about the panels is actually the people who were at the conference were engaged. So you, I've, I've been in panels in the past where you're up front and they say, has anyone got any questions? And you all sit and look at the ceiling while you wait for something to be said. But here it was very much that, you know, people were, yeah, people wanted to talk. Yeah, so. I, I would agree with that. There were maybe 50 people or 60 people in the hall for mine, so not mm -hmm. bad attended. And it was very lively. It went over at least six, seven people questions and then... You know, they even had some of those mini symposiums that were kind of in the middle of the exhibit hall. Sure. And those were actually pretty engaging as well. I, I, I attended a few of those, um, specifically in like cell and gene therapy area. And it was really kind of a, um, it was a good atmosphere for, even if there were like 20 to 30 people, it still had a buzz about it that people were anxious to be out. So it was fun, um, enjoyable. But as you mentioned, it didn't, at times, if you've ever attended AAPS, it has a carnival-like atmosphere to sure. it. Sure, yeah. I mean, there, some of them have been... Uh, pretty um, a, a little over the top at times, right, John? Yep, yep. <laughs> that does. I haven't been to that many to to see that sadly. So in terms of restaurants, we shout out to Mallory for finding Sam Pan. Yeah. I think that was the the best Big one hit. we went to. So place called was, Sam Pan. Yeah, yeah which very she good. she recommended to everyone, um, and and everyone who went there enjoyed it. So that was that was a good place to go to. I'll be back again. Yeah, and then, if you're ever in um, Philly, check it out. Sad, sadly, couldn't persuade other people to go to the Dandelion, though I did go there the, the last evening by myself, so I got a good good glass of um, Wells Bombardier to, oh. to go down with the And the what's meal. the Dandelion? It's it's actually, it's a Stephen Starr, um, part of the Stephen Starr chain of restaurants, but it's modelled on an English pub. Oh. So it started out with an English chef, a guy called Rob Aitkins, whose brother Tom Aitkins is a Michelin starred chef in the UK and they're both from the same area as my wife so huh. you sort of know who people are in the UK because we're all so small um, so yeah Rob Aitken's sort of basically set the menu up and I think he's been going like 11-12 years Very but nice. with my son doing his first degree at Drexel in Philly we used to go to the, the mm -hmm. Dandelion a lot so, and, so, and did you you said you got wine there or no? No Wells Bombardier it's, oh, uh, it's a draft beer yeah, yeah that was, so I, I didn't quite pick up no. on it being Wells Bombardier yeah because I love a good Bonington or a good yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and it's it's a bit of a meaty paint. So yeah, I like that. Next time yeah. we be next and you, time we and try surprisingly it. they're oftentimes lower in calorie, but or lower in alcohol content. But sure, I, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, um, and then of course Reading Station, we ate there a few times. Great place to be. One of my favorite places in America, actually. I enjoy Philadelphia quite a bit. So, um, what else do we want to touch so, on? So next up for Phil, for Philly and us in terms of conference, though we won't personally be attending, but Don Dufield is going to. SMS and so they've, they're actually stepping up what they want they require to attend they, not only proof of vaccination but negative um, test within three days of, of travel so Don has a bit of a challenge in terms of you know organising that um, yeah so even more strict than exactly. AAPS had been where we didn't have to provide a negative test so long as you had the vaccine card and sure. you know, they trusted you were yep. taking the necessary yep. precautions that's interesting that so the American Society for Mass Spectrometry, Mass Media, spectrometry yep, yep. they're, they're going to require them to get a, not all, the clear app, do we know if they're using that at all? or They're using an app, I don't know if it's clear or not. You know, another um, sidebar for you. Yeah, I actually signed up for clear, they have it at Airline, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so I signed up because I thought it was pretty cool and it was, a, I don't know, it had a fee to it. Turns out Kansas City doesn't have it, so... Um, it's, it's, and Ithaca certainly would. Yeah, and, and then when I looked around the country, I'm like, the places I might be flying don't have it because it allows for you to move much more uh, uh, readily through the airport. But they did refund my money, which I thought was pretty cool. How does, so, it, does it help internationally? It would help internationally. That's yeah. exactly what it's for. And it has sports venues. 
So a lot of um, arenas that were, are requiring vaccinations in certain states. So, you know, if you lived in like New York City, you definitely would want to have the Clear app and probably pay for that fee because you can walk into the sure. arena, show the yep. app and go. Yep. But it didn't seem, uh, you know, necessary here in the Midwest per se. I hope it grows into that. I think it would, I, I hope it uh, takes fold so that it, this makes it seamless to travel if you're being precautionary. Um, but the good news is they refunded me, which was cool. It's a federal, so I, federal I need, plan, I need to way. look into that because my next travel is actually to EBF in Spain. Yeah, um, which I would take, I would use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, but again, it, 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 the the travel is fairly convoluted because it's it's basically Ithaca to Charlotte to London yeah. to to Barcelona. No, all of that from London to Barcelona, and all that. That's yeah, so so uh, it, that's going to be fun. Uh, but so to get to Spain because we're we're a th- we're a third status country or something. So. I actually, you have to fill out a form with the Spanish health de- department. Um, I think it's filling out all your personal details. And now we're at the point where the, I can't do any more until 48 hours before I travel. Huh. Um, and I think, I assume at that point, it'll be send proof of vaccination, etc. And then they send a QR code to yep. allow you to travel. So I, I'm, I want to see what, what, what the next steps are, but... They've just said, well, you'll have to wait for wait yeah. to see what happens. So it looks like the conference is going ahead. Again, it, it'll be a fifth, you know, part part present, part virtual. Um, but the virtual is actually delayed by a week or two. So actually mm. there's a re- there is an incentive to, to actually be there in person because you're 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 doing things real time. Um, plus it's the fact of being in Barcelona. So Yeah. Um, no, I, I I'm I'm very excited for you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, if it wasn't over Thanksgiving, I probably would have petitioned to go or maybe yeah. wanted to attend. I do love Spain. It's a beautiful place. I had the good fortune to live in there, as you know, uh, back in like Minovacinto which is 1988, um, that long ago. Uh, but it, it, I, John, I think it's great that you're going to that. I like that they're going to delay it. That may actually cause more people to be there. Sure. I think AAPS had it the other way. Some of they had recordings of some of the panelists. Yep, yep. You were supposed to watch it. And I think that caused a lot. I had heard some feedback on um, one of the AAPS uh, month, membership uh, committee. Excuse me. I got some feedback when I on one of the AAPS uh, focus groups that I sit on this week that people uh, had said that when they recorded their videos for AAPS, almost no one watched them. And so when they got them. there, yeah, sure. they almost had to rehash yeah. it. And then as the, as, like the day, as the conference wore on, people were prepared to almost give their presentation. And that's what happened with our panel. With our panel, it was, it was very hit and miss because the first speaker was supposed to do a presentation. And she, she basically said, oh, I've done it already on video. I don't see why I have to do it. And the, the second person wasn't prepared to do it. I said, well, I'll do it if you want me to. And then uh, Stephanie Passes Farmer, who is actually our, our yeah. chair, so said, "Let's just talk about it." So those two actually got shelved. Um, yeah. So well, I, it I, was a, it was it was slightly disorganized until we got into the flow of things. That was not surprising. Yeah. So I mean, you in terms of you know travel on uh, Thanksgiving week, the reason why that happens with EBF is they try and avoid AAPS because they're conscious that wow. you know um, some people want to do both AAPS. And EBF. That's that's been a constant theme throughout the, the years. But sadly, sometimes it happens on Thanksgiving week. So then American attendance is, is down. But as, yeah. as as I'm British, I don't really do Thanksgiving. So it's like I don't care. <laughs> no, that, I'm going. <laughs> that, I, I wasn't even going to ask my wife about that. That's a sacred time. It's all, yeah. Oh, all, all turkey to- and football. I totally understand that um, piece. For me, it's like yeah, I don't quite get it. Yeah. I'm 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 much understood. rather going to, to sunny climes and <laughs> uh, it it could it, there's only like three weeks out of the year I wouldn't go, and that was one of them um but you know you brought up a good point about not trying to have overlap of conferences in fact one of the things about aaps that was uh, unfortunate was it overlapped with the immunogenicity summit conference which is one that um i think there's been maybe i forget how many but i I typically attend that annually we had we were unfortunate that i i was somewhat disappointed i couldn't attend although my our colleague john Pirro attended he's our senior director in the biopharma team and he had a great conference. They discussed many, many things with the FDA, and stay tuned for that. That's a podcast to come mm-hmm. because they had some real uh, movement on how we're going to handle immunogenicity preclinically, which is um, some uh, really th- there's a lot of change there. That'll be an interesting discussion. And then uh, also clinically, there's been some uh, we're at the forefront. KCS, I'll, I'll give us a nice little plug here. We're at the forefront of helping to drive how we're going to do sensitivity curves, how we're handling low uh, positive controls, and the statistical regression of it. And we worked uh, hand-in-hand with the FDA. So 
Uh, stay tuned for that. That'll be a podcast to come, and we'll share more on that. Obviously, that's a big passion of mine, sure. John. Yep, absolutely. So going back to EBF, one of the nice... Re- it's, it's always been in Barcelona. Um, always, actually, apart from the first one, always in the same hotel um, near the airport. Um, but the nice thing about it is, is and it comes back to vaccination rates, is mainland Europe was actually slow getting off the ground in terms of, of vaccination rates. Um, but Spain now is one of the um, more vaccinated countries where um, they're talking a 91.9% of the population have had their first, or eligible people have had their first dose, and they're at 83% um, have had two doses. So um, it, I picked up a map on the European Centre for D- Disease Prevention, and I can't see what the rest says because it's blocked out. Um, uncontrolled it must be it's really interesting to see the EU map in terms of yeah. countries and where they're vaccinated um, Portugal has actually become the role model for, for, for Europe um, where it's actually in terms of first dose if it would come up it's um, that's Spain, Portugal is 98.6 of the population wow. of, of, of eligible people who has had their first dose and it, 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 it's still Spain you have to hover over the map and see the flags and that tells you then. And in ninety one point three percent of eligible people have had two doses. My actually my wife's um brother, birth brother, has actually just gone out to Portugal with him and him and his wife uh, got tired of being in the UK and decided to that they are they want to set up a life in Portugal. Yeah. So they've actually picked a, a good place to go to. And yeah, then, there's a lot uh, before you move off of that, I, I started we, we talked about this beforehand and I wonder if Portugal, in part, it's. I wonder if it's just because it's a throughway, right? But they they hosted a lot of sports events. I wonder, like they, a lot of the. I'm I'm wondering why. And I'm curious why it's so high. I, I think, but all the European players, when they go abroad, mm-hmm. they come back and they um, go through quarantine in Portugal. So I I don't know if that's related to I, it. But like all your Premier League players and stuff like sure, that. I, I don't know. Just a thought. Yeah, random I, I, thought. I think, but I do love I, a good Iberian I, ham, I, by the way. I think. Well, the, you're back to Spain again. So, <laughs> I, I, yeah. But so, Iberia is the I, peninsula, yeah, so that's sure. Portugal and yeah, Spain. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So um. I I think there's some national identity stuff plays into this because huh. um, I read an article a while back about Denmark and they are sort of opening up more towards normality and again the, the, the vac- vaccination uptake in Denmark if I could just get this map to cooperate is 89.3% huh. first dose 88.1% fully vaccinated and this article is talking very much about how Denmark focuses on people working to working for the good of everyone else and so i think there is this national mentality about this is the right thing to do so they've they've gone and got mm-hmm. vaccinated but it, it, like I say I, i've read about portugal being a role model but actually other countries like ireland and iceland have yeah. also got very high vaccination rates surprise um, the but, irish that surprised that yeah, one surprised me yes i, I am too but I, what's I, the uk at the uk is, or is the uk what, was what? was one of the was like an Early role model and er- early on they were they were at the forefront, but their numbers have really tailed off and so now they're talking, um sixty six point eight six percent are um oh. fully vaccinated so that's you're not too far ahead of the U S then no it it really has dro- it really has leveled off I mean the, the like I say early you sort of April May June time it really sort of accelerated but it, in the, in recent months it's 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 died back so what um, is and I think, you know, you touched on something in Denmark where they, I'll call it like, hey, it's an altruistic thing mm-hmm. to get vaccinated. And I wonder in countries like even the U.S. here, it's almost, um, I think a lot of people have a, a, are under the feeling that, hey, I'm, I'm, I've already had it once or twice. And I'm, that, that's kind of the argument. And again, we're not going to go down that path. Sure. Whether it's, yeah. But I wonder if it's almost the um, similar uh, thought around, um, hey, the, the, the part of the reason why I live here is I don't have to get that. And I don't know, it seems like it's, it's surprising that the UK is so um, not as well vaccinated. Because yeah, in I, stories that you've shared, it seemed like when you were a child, you just went in. No, and I, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember that. So it's, I don't know if maybe, maybe America's rubbing off on the UK now. I think there you, is some You think you're going to start using inches? Yeah. Or yeah. You go away from the metric system? Uh, yes, that has oh. come up. It's cre- <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we, there is... There is talk of going back to imperial units. You think they'll put the like steering wheel on the right side of the car? No, that's not going to happen. No, I yeah. digress. Yes. But it, it's an interesting thing to go through some of these countries and 
Uh, even states within the U.S. I don't know if you want to go over any more no, uh, European just, nations. Europe. They were very high in general. Yeah. So was I, the UK was the England the lowest in the sixties or anybody else? No, in the, the, 60s? The, the, the so the. UK, oh, yeah, said, they, this map I've got for Europe ex- now excludes the UK because of Brexit. So gotcha. it's it's a big white spot in the middle. Yeah. Um, it actually the the laggard in the EU is actually Bulgaria, huh. um, where it's down in the twenty percent. Twenty percent. Um, and I don't understand that, but I, it was I also read a couple of days ago that um Russia is, is around I think fifty percent vaccinated, and my thought on that you know they talked about rolling out the Sputnik vaccine they they rolled it out early yeah. but there obviously hasn't their their own population isn't convinced at the value of their own own vaccines so i'll see see where russia goes interesting but i also and i would like to touch on this when we talk in the next podcast as a news item because i think asia was very slow to get access to access to vaccines whereas there are a lot of the countries that really were slow getting going have, have rapidly you know got their population vaccinated yeah, I, I, it's fascinating to sit here and think of a country in Europe that's under 30%, you said 20%, sure. and you wonder if there is a supply chain, you touched on it, but well, we don't know, it, we it, don't, it, but it, it, it's very, I, I, it's incredibly low, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, some, it, it, when you look at look at the map and there's that Eastern, Western, I mean, European What divide. are the other countries around it? Just curious. Yeah, they? well, so Romania is the next lowest, and it's at around 37%, but again, if you, if you run down the map like here... Greece. Um, that Poland is come on, Poland's sixty percent. Um, like Italy's in the nineties, right? And so is Greece. What Czechia's are... sixty six percent. Yeah, it Italy, Italy, Italy. I think got really. Yeah. Um, obviously, they yeah. were hit very hard to begin with, and I think they've reacted to that mm-hmm. because obviously they won so Italy. Yeah, they had some of the get, strongest lockdowns. Yeah. Sure. Um, so the eighty percent, eighty eighty seven percent first dose, but it really is that, like I said, an eastern, eastern western Europe, what we consider the former Eastern Bloc. Gotcha. So the the so the countries that were associated with Russia, la- are lagging the rest, Western Europe. Hmm. Some of it will be, um, money and resources. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. Anyway, so, you you yeah, the US, numbers, US were I'm fifty eight percent. Yeah, fifty eight percent fully vaccinated, sixty one percent with both. Um, that that seems. Not moving much, right? That, sure. that, that number yep. was over 50, felt like late summer, mid-summer time frame. So very little movement there, mm-hmm. which kind of, um, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm getting ready to get a third shot, so I'm not sure what everybody's thinking. But we'll break down some states. There are some, um, you know, well, who let, on the site that I was looking at, Puerto Rico was number one. 73% of Puerto Ricans are uh, vaccinated, which is great. Uh, Vermont was at 71%, Rhode Island at 70 and uh, Connecticut and Maine at 70 So there's your 70% team. I feel like a lot number of those have been at 70% for a while. Yeah, like may, those states, go. yeah. And maybe it's just a lot of them are smaller and mm-hmm. population-wise, they're probably the lesser. But, you know, all of them are up in that corner and then, sure. you know, just the northeast corner. And um, the other states that are in the 60s are like well, – D.C. is not a state, but Washington, D.C. is in the 60s, New Hampshire, Maine. And then you got New Mexico, Oregon, Washington are up there. Maryland, New Jersey, and Virginia, along with Pennsylvania and California, sure. all in the 60s. Lagging behind, um, coming in last place, is West Virginia at 41%. Wyoming at 43%. Uh, North Dakota at 45%. Arkansas, um, 47 Alabama, 45 And those are all the ones in the 40s. Uh, high, uh, excuse me, the, re- the others that are below 50 are... Louisiana, South Carolina, Tennessee, Missouri, and Georgia. Kansas at fifty three percent. You need to get you need to get yeah. moving. Gotta you need, you need to get out there, there and tell them people get yourself. Because we were, I think stuck. we were at fifty percent a long time ago. Yeah. I feel yeah. like that number hasn't moved at all. I, maybe and I don't know, John. I even got my flu shot. I'm I'm all shot up. Yeah, I can't remember if I had the flu shot or not. That's 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 the consequence of being old. And like <laughs> I was thinking about it this morning, it's like. I think I should have a flu shot, but did I have one? I, I That's great. Remember. You know, so I've been I've been taking these um, vitamins and supplements I like, and sometimes I'm not sure if I take it, but I've never had an out of body vaccine experience. Sure, yes, yeah, so I I need to figure that one out. Um, <laughs> yes, and and also I mean one thing that will be interesting to see what the uptake is, um, particularly now the Pfizer vaccine has been authorized for five to 11 year olds yeah. and I've already seen the articles start saying some parents are vaccinated and they're not considering vaccinating their children and, and yeah it it's it does my head it should move I think sure. the needle a little bit um hopefully it'll I, I don't know I, I, I 
Hope it gives rest to anybody who has anybody five. And then I think Moderna was six, but we'll talk about sure. that in the next yep. podcast, yep. obviously. Um, what else do we want to touch on? You know, we, we, we kind of started talking about normal and not normal. Um, was, I felt like there was a maybe one other thing that really made it sort of not normal at this particular one was they did, the hall was so big and we had so few people there, John. Mm-hmm. They didn't even have carpets down, did they? No, no. Not having carpets at a conference definitely made me feel like it was not a normal conference, but that was unfortunate. That's we, a cleaning measure. Really? To make sure that it was clean Oh, really? Because they couldn't well, get in and... Then I apologize to AAPS for calling them out for not having conf- f- f- rugs. Now that we know it was a cleaning thing. That feels like a scapegoat. But that, that, that's what we're being told live right here at the podcast. This is a cleaning thing. But that, that le- and then, um, you know, John, maybe you hadn't been to as many AAPS as I have, but I've been going for the last, like, I think, eight or nine years and each year it's kind of gone down a little bit in terms of its um attendance but in the past they'd have a lot of the bigger sponsors would put these big halos up in the sky Mm -hmm. and they'd have um you know happy hours usually there'd be three or four different um uh, sponsors where they'd have they'd roll out drinks at about 3 30 and those are some of the best times there was one of those and that got crowded. So that's really when it's the part of the reason why you go to those conferences are the coffee breaks and then the um, uh, happy hour time at about 3.30. And both of those times, and typically in, in a normal AAPS, they'd have coffee bars and they'd, for an hour, someone would maybe even like Cinnabons and I don't know, I've petted alligators. I've done all sorts of great things at these things. Jumped up on walls and stuck myself. I mean, they got, some of them do crazy things, cotton candies. All sorts of cool stuff. And then the afternoon, they have the happy hours. But that's the greatest time to just, like, there's just a surge of people and electricity and energy. And so we never got to that height, but there were one or two moments when there was some happy hour. You know what? There's like 30, 40 people around, and it felt a little normal. So Yeah, I mean, because there was no, for example, no entertainers or yeah. anything on stands. We've seen that in the past. I Certainly the big stands, a lot of those have disappeared. And... They, 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 the companies didn't even attend. Magicians, there was a, there's usually the, magicians. Yeah, exactly. I was doing card tricks, etc. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, rough the, life the, on the. But I guess we're being told by our producers that there's maybe a surprise they, they, they basically or told, something. We they, don't know what's going to happen, they, but they basically told us to shut up. Is, is what you're that, trying to say? And that is very yes. hard to do, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, actually had a couple of questions that we wanted to ask you guys now that we had you in the hot seat for the oh. first time. Uh, on camera even. So um, Aaron and I wanted to ask you guys a couple of questions. Um, and um, of course this can be edited, but uh, we're not going to cut anything out of this portion. <laughs> um, what is, first Dominic and then John, what, is, uh, what has been your favorite episode of our 50 and why? You know, I kind of felt that was coming. They've, they've, they start to blur together a little bit. Um, you know, what and why? Huh. You know, I felt like um, there was, I don't remember the exact number. It was somewhere in the 30 range, and we did a, um, a review of vaccines. And mm-hmm. it was like the breakdown of each of them and our thoughts on them. And it was when we could all get in line to get them. And that one uh, probably caught the most attention from colleagues and friends. So I don't know, I don't remember the episode number exactly. I felt like it was maybe 31 or 32, but it was on our, like, one of our reviews of the vaccines. Okay. John? I, th- I th- again, sticking with the vaccine theme, I think when the Pfizer vaccine was approved was the one that actually, there was a lot to talk about and it was exciting and it was really good. If I had to choose another one, it would be the episode that got t- cut in half where we didn't actually get to oh, yeah. show the main topic, but the main topic was, was great fun to talk through because it was all like scandal and gossip and, and everything else. It was, it was excellent That's true. Fun. We, we, we need to revisit that someday. <laughs> I forgot that we had promised. And I you. have so many follow-up <laughs> yeah. articles to that. And maybe, One of these days is like, yes, we're going to talk about yeah. it again. So yeah. yeah. And, and, and then I like our guests. I should add, um, oh, sure. we had the one with, I believe it was Piro and well, Lawrence question, and Habibi. So oh, so okay. Pause there. Okay, Aaron? <laughs> Aaron, would you like to ask him a question? Um, yes, the pizza oven, obviously. Now that we're all in town, are we going to be able to have a pizza from the pizza Absolutely. oven? <laughs> Absolutely. I will for sure. Have you had one yet? Oh, I've had three. Um, I've, I've used it three times, and 
Um, by the third time, I ended up making some delicious pizzas. And so I will refine my game. There's still a couple kinks I got to work out in terms of the dough I want to use, how we're making the dough, and then um, the sauce as well as there is an art to getting the uh, cheese to melt the right way. But, oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Um, I, I would love to be able to, and as you mentioned it, I was like, oh, I could have liked it. Anyway. But it'll probably, get, um, it's not something I can use much for the next few months. Sure. But before I do it, there's a couple things I have to iron out. But I, I, there's also a little getting that peel moving the right way. But yeah, and then the temperature. I got a little gun for it and everything. So oh, this, yeah. This. And I need, I need help. I need a sous chef. My son's my sous chef, so I need a couple hands to help out. Putting pellets in, it's a full-on project. So it's something to look forward to in 2022 then? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. The, 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 I feel like there's a, a March or April commitment that I just made to making pizza pies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I got an apron, too. I got an apron that says, I'm the special sauce, and it's got an explicative yeah. next to it, and it's bright pink. <laughs> our, next, our next live recording will be I, pizza I truly can't wait for that. Oh, I'll wear that yeah. thing. So, guys, um, uh, again, back to both of you. Uh, John, you first, and then Dom this time. What was your favorite question asked by a viewer? Oh, I don't oh, remember boy. any. I mean, yeah, we do all the talking, right? Like, yeah. What what, what, to, to be honest, so much of that stuff, it just, you know, you're in the moment and you answer it. And once you've answered it, you move on. And I, I honestly, I, I couldn't. Sure. I can't really what, remember. What's any. fresh is Sonia Hall asking us about. Um, how we could further the community, you know, that, that sticks out is probably the one that, but that's just because we did that recently. She, she asked us a, a question around how do you think KCS could help nurture the local talent? Well, that's a perfect segue, Dom, because uh, uh, one of the other questions we wanted to ask, I, I am specifically not using the language, what is your favorite guest, but I want to know which guest who attended our podcast stood out the most in your mind that you thought, you know, that was a really good podcast episode? Well, I'll start. John and Amy are excluded. We can't, because that's too easy to say John Butts. Oh, sure, sure. and, and, and we report to Amy, so that's too easy. We're going to remove that. Sure. You know, um, and then I'll give shouts out to, you know, Stephanie Par Passes Farmer was great. Sonia was great. Um, we had a lot of internal people, but I felt like Alf's from Attentive stuck out. Yeah. He, he, you know, that one, I felt like I learned a little bit from sure. him and some of the synergies. Um, but, you know, everybody, and I don't want to discredit the internal team, but I'll, I'll go with Alf as mine. Yeah, they have a good program over Alf, there. Alf, yeah. Alf Botchway and, you know, and, and Attentive, he had a, we had a good discussion on drug development and in life and um, how, how his organization uh, kind of where, where, they, where they end, we pick it up. Yeah. You know, it was good. John? I, I'd agree. I, I think every guest, that we had on brought something and it was it's always fun to interact with a different person because frankly I get sick of talking to him. <laughs> um, so it's really nice. I think Mallory was was actually a really good yeah. good guest because she came into it and because she's relatively new, it was it was starting to talk basics and and talk really talking about the business from a very different angle from yeah. people who've been in it for years. And I thought I thought that went that went well, but I think everyone was was good. I'd and, have and to have everyone on back again. I'll add from the Mallory, a lot of internal people enjoyed that one. They mm -hmm. didn't that that was educational to not because Mallory was asking some questions that I think people working here sometimes are afraid to ask. Sure. And so that I I agree that had a lot of great feedback from internal people that were like, hey, that one I liked a lot. So that was it's good good one to touch on. I, okay. I agree. And kind of kind of moving on from from that question. Um, we, of course, the four of us, we get together often and, and talk about our planning, upcoming episodes and such. But in the coming year, in 2022, is there a guest that has uh, you've had in your mind that you would love to see if uh, I could get on the show? Um, or maybe somebody who could return? I, I personally would like to have, so, you know, obviously... We, there's the big um, change where Vitruvian became our majority yeah. owner. I think it would be really good to have um, so some people from there. Or the, yeah, or you, anyone associated with Vitruvian, or changes associated with the Vitruvian okay. takeover would be Yeah, I agree. Would Sophia good. would be great to have on. Yeah, or, or either the, the, exe the, the executive Tom board and, Menzels. Um, yeah, they'd be good Matt too. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, res- I'm gonna second that vote. I think if we could get some of the Vitruvian people here personally, if they come over, yeah. love to record a podcast with them live. That would yeah. be awesome. And, and, and to be honest, basically anyone British to just bring that extra class to the podcast <laughs> is a good way to go. I mean, all right, Tom. Uh, Madden, and then you know, Carl June's always out there, right? Tom like, all right, gentlemen. Well, uh, those are all of the pop questions that we had while you guys were in the hot seat, Aaron, unless you had anything else? No, nope, I'm good. Thanks. All right. So uh, this is uh, Jeremy and Aaron signing off for the moment from episode 50 of uh, the weekly bioanalysis. Back to you guys. So thank the Lord that's over. Oh, man. <laughs> this has been... I can't believe you had to sit next to me and smell my coffee burn. Yeah, um, I'm out of tea, which is even more. So what is your weekend plan? I know you're here in Kansas City. You'll be home. You got any weekend we, plans? We, actually, for a change, I do. Um, so this, this trip to Kansas was actually shorter than I would usually do. Um, my do- As we t- discussed in the past, my daughter got engaged in July. Um, but with my son's wedding, that sort of got pushed to one side. Um, my wife... Once we got the wedding out of the way, my wife said, right, we have to do something for Sophie and Noah. And so sun, last Sunday, we were supposed to have a get-together with his family and, and have a nice sort of celebration of, of their engagement, except that his family backed out because his dad and brother both had a golf tournament they had to attend. So Sunday fell apart. So this Saturday is actually we're doing something. Um, so it was my wife had a menu all drawn up and I was supposed to contribute because I won't get back till yeah. late Friday so I'm not I'm just turning up and and basically consuming the company. Yeah. yes yes so it's I assume it's all happening in the in the background while I'm here um, but I I haven't done anything to it yet. you don't know the menu eh, approximately oh. yeah but but not not she'll she'll go off on interesting tangents no doubt so Fine. we'll we'll see we'll see where it ends up Sounds exciting. Congrats yep. again. That's great year. And, ho- and hopefully hopefully the weather behaves because obviously what we have here is we've got it's torrential rain and we've just gone through that in New York. I, when I left on Monday, it was we had flash flood warnings and all sorts. Yeah, the f- um, local waterfalls, you see pictures of them. They're, they're mm-hmm. just incredible in terms of the amount of water that's going over them. Um, but I'm hoping this weekend will be nice. Not sure, but I know the Northeast is getting hammered with rain right now. Sure. Yeah. So the family's telling them. Thankfully, my family hasn't lost any power. There's been about half a million people without power in Massachusetts. Yeek. So that's been great. But um, you'll have fun. That sounds yep. exciting. I, some I, normalcy then, there, right? Yep. Being able to see some, so got that, celebrate some memorable got, things. Got yeah. that. And then I've got still 160 bulbs left to plant. 160 bulbs? Left. And do you have like the thing that stand no, up I, or are you I, putting the... I have a attachment on on a drill. Ah. So Because so, the, the daffodils There's, want to go like six inches deep. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yep, I, that I was using Could the be. drill to get the uh, Halloween signs. So I was, I was supposed to do that last week, but then last week I decided instead to clean out gutters because <laughs> this is this is my fun weekends. Um, so which <laughs> I'm so glad I did that? it. <laughs> I'm so glad I did it because the day after was when it was the torrential rain, oh. which would have been a nightmare in the house. And um, bors- oh, so. The only thing I did wrong was at one point I couldn't get the ladder to sit straight on the on the ground. So actually, it was on a step, and first thing I did, I'm like up, however many feet up in the air, and the ladder slid back this off the step onto the ground. So I have an interesting bruise forming on my right leg from that. But yeah, it's you're lucky you're not more, the ER with a no, back injury. Exactly, Number yeah. one back injury in America: people ladder falling off a ladder. Yep, Number yep. one. It used to be rollerblading uh, that passed it, but it's still falling off the ladder, I believe. Well, and I'm was, glad I you're was, okay. I thought it was being really <laughs> safety minded too, so I'll remember that for the future. And because at some point it'll be putting up the lights wow. ready for the holiday season. So you got to outsource all of that, John. I saw, that, okay. I, I saw that on um, as I was driving here yesterday that, that there was signs oh, yeah. on the, in the verb saying, you know, Chris, uh, putting up Christmas lights, call this 913 number. Yeah, you, you'll, you have no shot at getting those people now. You had to do that back in the. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'd be in trouble. I, actually, I do my own Christmas lights. That I do. But so I just got it. gutters done, and if I have to clean the gutters, I'm sending the 16-year-old up there. That's right. He's doing them. Yeah, so we, um, we've got high gutters that I can't reach, so I need to figure out. I just got new it. ones. I got these safety guards. I'm supposedly not ha- going to have to do them, but I, I got you. That that sounds... Uh, 
Sounds like an exciting weekend. At least, though, I've got no more plants growing in the guttos. Yeah. So that, that, that was the big... That was the, I've been that there. Was the I know what you're talking it, about. Particularly one that was, like, above my our yeah. bedroom. And I think it was... It's, like, a, a four-foot-high plant growing in yeah, the guttos. That is now gone. I, 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 sadly, I, I know what you mean. I have had... I've gone up there and been like, oh, man... That's like five inches tall. What the heck is that? <laughs> Dandelions, um, chewing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get the dandelions with the spikes on them. So my weekend is, um, I, I, I've got some busy weekends. Um, Halloween party this year. It's uh, Last year we went it, to a friend's house, and he's been doing this party for quite some time. He, he's Swedish, okay. and it's the glug. So I don't know if you know what glug is, but it's a Swedish drink they make sure. around this time of yep. year, and it's wonderful. It's a... Uh, Little sweet, tons of fruits, uh, wines, some other mixtures. It's like a warm sangria almost. Did he do it last year? He did it last year, and he's been doing this party. I don't know how I got to be cool enough to make it this year and last year, but he's been doing it for a number of years, and so the wife and I are going as uh, Ghost and Ghostbuster. That's our costume, uh, so we're excited about that. And maybe, then I'm going to Vegas. Maybe he's heard about your pizza oven and he's, he's after it. Oh, they, I, he's heard all sorts of stories about my <laughs> pasta sauce. In fact, I, you have to bring something, and last year I bring... I brought meatballs, homemade meatballs, and homemade pasta sauce in a crock pot. My wife made fun of me because, you know, that, that's not typical for Midwesterners to put in a crock pot. But, you know, look at me. I bring meatballs everywhere I go. Shouldn't surprise you. I've never had them. Why aren't they here? Dang. Called me out right in front of me. <laughs> Didn't even get a chance so to anyway, make my yes. homemade pasta anyway, sauce. That'll not, be fun. Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, I'm going to Vegas finally. So the 20, and it's great. That's still on. Remember, what, I booked it back in August when we had our 20th anniversary. We're going with a couple of the couples. Um, they're staying at a, a house outside of the city. And then we're downtown in the, because they've all been there and they got this special multi million dollar home they are staying in. But we were like, no way. We want the lights. We're staying at the Caesar. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to, one of Adrian's friends, if you know who Adrian Chicos is, and Chris Coffin, mm-hmm. they have um, they are in the entertainment industry. And so I think I'm going to get a special little shout out and uh, sh- go into a show called Fantasy. My wife loves this stuff. She loves Moulin Rouge and burlesque shows. Don't ask me. She, I, I, they're not my favorite, but she loves them. I want to go see David Copperfield make something disappear. But So we're supposed to go see that. Um, there might even be, they might even give us an anniversary shout out. We're supposed to meet him afterwards. So a little surprise for the wife there. And uh, so pretty all, excited about all, it. All this after your brother's show to the Red Sox. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. My, my brother knows the um, chief uh, IT officer is a Burlington High School graduate. So my brother was at the playoff games and it's set up on one of the scoreboards. We welcome and it had about five names and it said the Warinos up there. So. That was pretty cool. Yeah, but yeah, no, we're, uh, yeah. we're infamous, not yes, famous. Uh, it's the other way around. There's a lot of Warinos running around still, but we're infamous. Uh, no, it should be an exciting weekend, exciting trip. I'm glad to get away. I'll be in Vegas for so, about four or five days. And my plan, as soon as the wife goes to bed, I'm just going to continue to gamble. And then like when I get up, she can start shopping and I'll nap. We got it all mapped out. No, it should be so fun. when is that? Um, I leave a week from today. So okay, it's Thursday nice. through... Uh, they are Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and a Sunday night. Come home on a Monday. Mm-hmm. Should be fun. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I don't know what I'll do, but it's been a great podcast with you, yep, John. Absolutely. And we're excited to have another fifty more. Right, this is the fiftieth one. Fifty, hundred more. Hundred. Hundred and fifty more, and hopefully I'll retire at that point. <laughs> if you have hundred and fifty more, I don't know how many that year. That'll be a few years, I guess. But feels like I couldn't retire. Yet. Yeah, no, but it should be great. And it was good to see you. Absolutely. Thank you very yeah. much. Good to see you again. Yeah.